Greetings, beloved. Thank you for tuning in today. It is the dream of many people to purchase homes. While many people choose to purchase a home that is already built, others may choose to build from the ground up. Either way, the builder is required to use a blueprint. A blueprint is defined as a design or a plan put on paper for the purpose of constructing a building successfully. The same way construction workers follow the blueprint in order to successfully build a house, likewise, Christians who want to build a solid family must be willing to follow God's blueprint to do so. Stay tuned as we discuss the design that God has given us to follow, God's blueprint for family. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's so good to be back in this place again this week on Thursday as we talk about um, God's blueprint for family. And um, of course, I have here with me my lovely husband, <laughs> Brother Hawk <laughs> Bolden. <laughs> well, I'm glad um, that y'all were able to tune in tonight and um, we look forward to what the Lord has to say to us concerning family and um, also concerning marriage. Amen. And we think it's very important, uh, very important that God have uh, started this broadcast and many people have been blessed by it so far. And that is always our, our prayer that people will be blessed by what God has to say and uh, concerning family. And we know that God really uh, thinks about family and, and you know that uh, in the family unit and uh, we believe and I think a lot of times what happens in, in especially in today's age people they limit God to church you know and as far as uh, of course the church coming together being one but God is also concerned about family why because many different families make up the church you see many different families make up the church uh, when God called Abraham, uh, you know, and separated him for his purpose, God told him that I'm going to bless you and your family. You see, he didn't say I'm going to bless you and your friends or you and your church buddies or, or anything like that. He said, I'm going to bless you and your family. It's your family that's going to be blessed. And so we know that God thinks about family, you know, and, and, the, and, and, uh, the bottom line is, uh, even the church is a family, you know, it's a picture of family, you should say, you know, of course, we, those of us that are saved, we're the sons and daughters of God, you see. And so we know that, that we're family. We know that we are. And now let's, we can think about that, how we're called the sons and daughters of God, not the cousins, not the, not the friends of God. You know, we're considered the sons and daughters of God. In other words, the family of God. And so that's what God wants us to understand is um, family. It's, it's important to him. And so if it's important to him, then that means that he set in his word some guidelines uh, for us to go by concerning family and how the family, uh, <clears throat> how the family should operate. And we think that that's very important. Now, you and I, we've talked for, what, over a year now about husband and wife and, and different things, and we've covered a, a lot of things uh, when it comes to husband and wife and you know we've uh, you know uh, from basically watching out for different things that the enemy would try to bring between husband and wife and one of those things uh, that we mentioned but never really got into uh, as far as you know family is children mm -hmm. and, and 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 what God thinks about that and that's one of the things that we have to have to also understand that Children are a part of the family as well, you see. And so God has a specific way uh, for children to be raised, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we may wonder. All right, let's, let's go look at that in the Bible. Let's go to the book of Malachi, and, we, and we'll read that real quick. For all of us that brought our Bibles. <laughs> we are one. <laughs> so if you have yours, I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, if you will, uh, start reading uh, at verse 13. We're at the second chapter of Malachi. So if you have your Bibles, go to the second chapter of Malachi. 
And uh, we'll start reading at verse 13. And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and with crying out, insomuch that he regardeth not the offering any more, or receive it, it, receive it with goodwill at your hand. Okay, now what is that talking about? It's in, in this chapter, God is talking to the priests, and he's telling them about the different things that they do, and he's saying one of the things that they do is they, they, they live in abomination, they do abominable things, and then they come before him and they cry on the altar like, oh, God, I'm yours. And, you know, like what people do today. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that you, basically you're, you're doing that so much until I don't even receive it anymore because it's not sincere. Mm -hmm. You see, and so that's what God looks for is sincerity whenever we're doing anything for him. It has to be sincere. OK, let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 14. Yet you say, wherefore? Because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. All right. Go ahead and keep reading. And did not he make one? Yet had he, yet had he the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one? Okay, stop right there. So he's telling them, one of the reasons why I'm not accepting your, your worship, so to speak, Mm -hmm. And you, you coming before me is because of how you're treating your wife. You have dealt treacherously with her. And then, of course, you can fast forward to the book of Matthew and to the Gospels where you see the Pharisees are asking Jesus Christ, uh, you know, basically about divorce. And basically the way the Lord answered them, it was because they were mistreating their wives and basically uh, giving her, giving, writing her a writ of divorce for basically any reason. You see, in other words, they were mistreating their wives and then just divorcing them because, you know, for whatever reason, you mm -hmm. see. And so the Lord is saying, I'm not going to hear uh, what you have to say concerning, you know, uh, your worship or anything like that because of the way you're treating your spouse. Mm -hmm. All right. OK, now pick up back up and reading at verse 16. Actually, verse 15. And did not he make one, yet had the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed? Okay, that is one of the reasons why it is meant for husband and wife to serve the Lord. You see, mm -hmm. it's not, God didn't just bring husband and wife together so that we can enjoy one another. He said, I've made you one so that there can be a godly seed. In other words, if there is strife in between husband and wife, there's not going to be a godly seed. Why? Because that child is growing up in a, in a, a house that's striving, in a house where a, a husband and wife, mom and daddy are arguing, and it does something to a child. I don't think, you know, uh, people re really, really realize what that does to a child to grow up in a home where parents are arguing all the time and fussing and things like that. That child, when they go to school, uh, you know, especially when they first start going to school, they have to get used to being around other people. <clears throat> They're around a lot of other children. It's a lot of turmoil. You know, they're getting on the bus, seeing all the traffic and, and all of these things. Their little lives are changed or, and, you know, in their minds, mm -hmm. you see, even from a child, one of the, even for, as a baby, you know, when that baby first come out of that mother's womb, it has to get used to not being held all the time and not being, you know, it, that child has to get used to that, that baby does. And so that's what you do is you, you're constantly weaning them off of you and at the same time being an example. And so when that child grows up, it gets old enough to go to school, they see all the turmoil, they get picked on, they get teased, they, you know, dealing with all these different personalities. And they, they basically are, are thrust into a world of change and a world of, you know, noise and all of this other stuff. And so when they come home, there should be peace there, something that they could come home to. You see, and we've talked about that before, how husband and wife, they go to work dealing with all kind of demons and folks that are possessed, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you come home, you want peace. Right. And so you, we have to think the same thing about children. Mm -hmm. when, when children come home from school, they need to come home to a stable environment where there's peace. And so God is saying, the reason why I made you one 
is so that there may be a godly seed. Now, that's something right there for us to think about. You see, what, what does he mean when he said one? Meaning the reason why I created sex to begin with for you to become one naturally mm -hmm. is so that you can raise, there could be a godly seed raised, you see. And so what is our purpose as husband and wife, not only to, to, to manifest God in our marriage and give people a picture of what the marriage is between Christ and his church, mm -hmm. but it is also to bring children into this world. Let's make no mistake about it. Children are a blessing from God. When we begin right. to see them as a burden, then, you know, we won't love them the way that we're supposed to. But children are a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. And so God is saying that he gave us that child, you know, to be a, so that we could have a godly seed. Why? Because God wants adults to be saved and to have children when they, when they conceive, you know, and after they've gotten married, to have children and for those children to have that godly legacy passed on to them so that they could raise up children and, and to be passed on. You see, it's in this day and age, we have all kind of devilment being passed on to children. Children, they pick up bad habits from their parents. They pick up this attitudes and, and all of these different things from their parents. But we need to start passing God on to our children, godly character mm -hmm. to our children. That is something that God desires. And of course, um, you know, as you know, as you were speaking of school, it goes back to um, the old age old saying that parents are the first teachers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like you're saying, what, it, what exactly are we going to teach our children about the Lord and about um, not just talking the word, but living it, mm -hmm. you know, and we should be their example and there should be peace in the home. And when we think about the fruit of the spirit, you know, and some of the things that the word teach us, um, concerning the, um, the work of the flesh, um, and, and the character, of course, is just the opposite. That means, you know, you, there shouldn't be the yelling and outbursts and anger and fighting and, and war and all of that going on. You mm -hmm. know, if we're, um, exuding the character of the Holy Spirit, then, you know, that love, joy, peace temperance, mm -hmm. self-control, you know, meekness, That's humility, right. all those things. Um, these are the things that we should be growing in and teaching our children That's to grow right. in as well. That's right. And the Word of God tells us to train up a child in the way that he should go so that when he is old, he will not depart from it. And we have to think about what they're saying there, to train a child. And many times we as parents, uh, we think our children, we think that our good personality is enough to, <laughs> to rub off on them and they're just going to get it. But that's not, that's not mm -hmm. how it is. You, you know, we have to train our children. In other words, we can't, take, we can't just assume that our children come here already knowing what to do, how to do, and things like that concerning the Word of God and how to live. We have to train them. And I think a lot of times we as parents, we get lost into this idea of just letting a child be the child. Just let them, you know, you got to let them. No, you don't. You just, you have to train them. Right. You know, and if it's, and we're talking about when things don't line up with the word of God. Mm. They have to be trained, you see. They have to be trained. And many times uh, we, we lose it in that area where we, we don't train them. We're just hoping that they, you know, grow up and become product, productive or citizens or whatever the case is by just simply watching us and let's not make a mistake about it children learn a lot from watching us but we have to take an active role in training them you see mm. an active role not only being an example for them but also actually hands-on training them you see right. and, and when they're doing something that goes against the word we have to make sure that they are making the proper adjustments and not just sitting back hoping that they finally catch on. You know, we have to actively, right. ha have to actively train them. All right. And when you're um, talking about actively training kids and um, being hands-on, it just makes me think about one of the examples that we've shared in the past concerning our children. And, you know, whenever they may do something wrong or they have to be disciplined in whatever manner, um, and that is 
we take them back to the word and make sure they know that, you know, when you've done something that's not pleasing to the Lord, you have to repent for that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and try to help them understand that it's not just you going against um, your parents' rules. It's not just um, you just did something that got you in trouble, mm -hmm. but you went against the word and you're supposed to be living you know, according to the word. So you have to repent for that, you know, and that's a part of that training to teach our children that it's not just about us showing up in the sanctuary, but every day um, in everything we do, thinking about the Lord and thinking about whether or not what we're doing is pleasing him. And mm -hmm. so, um, and that does take a lot of training, mm -hmm. you know, um, and so th those are just some other things that, you know, we do to train our children to, you know, we train them that this is a lifestyle not just a visit to the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And especially in, in those early years, because we have to realize, you know, that just because our children are on a, under our care, mm -hmm. that doesn't automatically mean that, that they have the sense that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, and we have to, I, you know, the way I think about it is when a child is born, that child is born knowing nothing. And whatever you put into that child, that's what you're going to get out of it. Now, along with that, and we just have to say it the way that it is, that, as we've said before, the devil does not discriminate. <laughs> that's right. Whether it's a little child, you know, you, you can read all through the Bible about demon-possessed children. He don't care, you know, how young they are. They, they'll be demon-possessed if they're not covered. You see, that, that devil, he, he tempts them the same way he tempts adults. In fact, he tried to get to children while they're still young, of course, so that he can influence them for the rest of for their whole life. You see, mm -hmm. and that's really even more so why we have to make sure that we train our children. But we, we have to cover our children with the word of God. And, you know, we basically have to know our children are like sponges when they first got get here. You know, right. whatever is around them, that's what they're going to soak up. And so that means husband and wife, mom and daddy need to watch what environment that we place around our children. We have to be careful with those things, that we don't just allow anything to come in, you know, and, and things like that. Right. And, and, you know, I believe that it's important that our children see that in us, that we don't just, you know, that, that we're living uh, what, the way that we want them to live, you see, mm -hmm. and just being active in their life. That's what God calls for, is for us to train them and like I said a lot of times we miss that we don't just we just hoping that they finally catch on and we're just you know when we see those little things in our children we better step up you know because right. those little things are what we consider little things they'll become big things mm -hmm. uh, three years old they taking candy out of the store without you know uh, you know that like I said it's just some things you don't have to teach children. They just, the devil's there to teach them. If you're not there to train them, he'll teach them, you know. Right. And so you, basically what you have to do is you have to have more of an influence in that child's life than the devil does mm -hmm. or that anybody else does, you see. Right. And of course, you know, we know that we can't um, shield our kids from every evil thing on the face of the earth. We know that um, when they go to school, because that's, the main place they're going to spend all of their time away from us mm -hmm. when they go to school that they're, they're going to see all sorts of things, all sorts of behaviors and um, things that we may deem inappropriate, things that may go against the word. And that's why it's that much more important for us to set the standard at home so that when they see things, when they're away from home, they can think, hey, you know, that's different. That's not right. You know, or, or, knowing the word enough to say, you know, that goes against what the word says, mm -hmm. you know, and so um, that that makes it that much more important for us to be that example and for us to train them at home and to uh, make sure our home has the right environment mm -hmm. for them to learn in. Mm -hmm. And I think about uh, uh, many years ago, I, th I want to say it was in uh, 2006, I preached a series of messages called Giving Your Children Back to God. And, you know, the way that God gave that to me was that when children are born, he's basically giving that child to the parent. Mm -hmm. And so when that child has been birthed, it's our job as parents to give that child back to God. 
In other words, children are a gift from God. And so depending on how we treat that gift, it, it, that depends on how we raise that child and, and, you know, how we present it to God, you see. Right. And so God wants us to um, love our children the way that he loves us. That means chastisement. That means correction. That means encouragement. All of, these th all of these things that God does for us as his children, he's the perfect example of a parent, and that's what we're supposed to do for our children. Mm -hmm. And what we have to notice, especially you know, when it comes to children, we probably get to this in, a, in another uh, part of this lesson in, in later on uh, in another week or so, <clears throat> is that God is always love. The Bible says that's the definition of love is God. God is love. And so that means that anything that he does, does, love is the motive behind it. You see, love is always the motive. And so whatever we do with our children, for our children, whatever the case may be, love has to be the motive. Now, that's the first thing that we have to know. Love has to be the motive. I have seen parents do things for their children, not because of love, but because they're trying to buy their children right. or manipulate or what I mean, you know, it mm -hmm. people, parents got all kinds of motives for why they do things. So I'll, I'll, you know, reward you if you do this right. Or if you do, you know, <clears throat> while some of that may be needed, children should not be bribed into doing what's right. right. They should just learn to do because what you can do is you can train a child to condition them to yeah, think, yeah. well, as long as I do this, then I'll get this. So if I do that, I'll get that, you know. And so what happens is, as long as they'll, they'll become manipulative in it. Right. When I want something, then I'll act right. Now, many of us as parents, we've gone through that with our children. You know, when I want something, I, then I'll act right. But as soon as I've gotten what I want, I'm right back to the same old sour child I was before, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> and so parents train their children right. to be that way. No, you're not going to get rewarded because you're doing good. That's just whatever we do for our children, they have to understand it's because we love them. Right. Nothing else. You know, mm -hmm. nothing else. You, you, you know, if you get toys, it's because we love you. Not because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing around the house anyway. You see, <laughs> I'm not going right. to pay you. You know, <laughs> that's just not going to happen, you know, to, to do what you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. you see. And so we have to train our children, you know, we just we have to train our children. And really what we're doing is extending grace to them, especially, you know, uh, whenever they get in trouble, you know, they have to know that even when they're in trouble, that love, the love of their parents are still there. They don't need to feel like I've disappointed mom and daddy and not even mad with me and that's, that's one of the worst feelings a child can have is to feel like they've gotten out of mom and daddy's good graces mm. because of the mistakes that they've made, you know. That child should always have love to come back to, always. And we, right. we see that even in the prodigal son. And we're going to get into all of these different things mm -hmm. in the coming weeks concerning training up our child, and, you know, in, in the way that he should go. Training him to love the Lord. Training that child to be responsible. All of these different things are things that God requires. So what we had to do, we had to get all of this marriage stuff out of the way, um, a lot of it out of the way, I should say, so that now that the marriage is intact, we got children, and now we work together. Right. Since now we know how to shield our marriage and things like that, now we work together to raise our children. Now, I'm going to tell you, parents, that marriage is about more than you and your spouse. You know, and, and that's one thing you better know, that that... That child, you're training that child even for relationships. If they see dysfunction between mom and daddy, they'll grow up getting into dysfunctional relationships, you see, because that's what they know. Right. Because that's what they know. And I, I share this again. When I was little, growing up, I never saw my mother and father argue or raise their vo voice or anything like that. And uh, one summer I went to stay with an auntie of mine and my aunt and uncle. And when, they would, when he would come home, 
I would, they had, uh, I think, I want to say two fireplaces in their house. I would go hide in that fireplace way back off in the other side of the house because I knew that it was going to be a war. And I would, I remember sticking my, getting in that fireplace and, you know, in the dark in there and sticking my fingers in my ears because I wasn't used to all of that hollering. You know, I was just real timid, didn't, I wasn't used to all of that. You know, I had never seen anything like that. And I, I didn't understand why anybody would do that. And so, but all of the other kids, you know, because they not only had their children, but they had foster children. And I mean, if they were sitting there, if the children were sitting there playing a game and when my uncle came home, uh, him and his, my auntie, they'd start arguing and they'd just sit right there like, and just ignore it as if it wasn't going on. And I, I just couldn't understand how in the world are they dealing with that? You know, what was it? It was because it had become common to them. Mm -hmm. And they had developed this shield for it, so to speak, just like we can do as parents. You know, we, we, we can get used to our children, our little babies hollering and it don't, you know, we get to the point where it doesn't, we're just used to it. It's not bothering us the way it did at one time, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what children will do. They will adapt and adjust to whatever they come in at. And so it's our job as parents to set that standard for them of what's right, what's wrong, what's acceptable and what's not, what's healthy for relationships, what's not, what's, you know, all of these things. It's our job as parents to set that. And, even, and when something does get out of line or out of hand in the home, it's our job to let them know this isn't right. Mm -hmm. Mom and daddy arguing or raising our voice in front of you, that's not right. That's not what we're supposed to do, you see. And right. that puts it in their mind, okay, when I get grown, I know that this isn't right. It's not mm -hmm. that, okay, when I get grown, mom and daddy argued and subconsciously, that's what I've been trained to do and that's normal, you see. Right. And so it's our job to set that standard for them. <laughs> I was going to bring out that same point that it's important, you know, as parents that when we do make mistakes, that we're able to explain that to our children and say, hey, you know, we did this this way, but that really wasn't the right way, mm -hmm. you know, and apologize and show, show them how to apologize, That's you right. know, and to let them know that, you know, it's okay that if, if you're wrong to admit that you're wrong, mm -hmm. you know, that's just another part of us being, um, training them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was about to say being trained, but yeah, right. I guess that's a, that is a part of us being trained also yeah. <laughs> not to uh, teach our children that we're perfect, mm -hmm. you know, but to let them see that, hey, you know, even as an adult, you might make some um, mistakes that you have to repent for and that you may have to explain to your children. Yeah. You know, it's just a part of that training process that goes on. That's right. Let me tell you, when I was growing up, <laughs> I didn't um, have anybody training and teaching me that it was okay to say I'm sorry and, and things like that. And it affected me as an adult because I always...